All right, guys. So we're back. We're starting on our second part of our guide for at our 2016 version of the Arch Linux EFI install guide. Um, we are on part two, which is installing Arch and making it boot. So what we've already done is we've created our partitions. Well, we, um, we downloaded the ISO, put it on a USB stick with Rufus, and then booted to it, created our partitions on our new drive, and added the proper file systems to that drive, or to those partitions. And now we're gonna go ahead and, and mount those drives and install the base system. So, I'll do lsblk again. So you can see what we're working for, we're working with. Excuse me, I just finished eating dinner. Uh, we've got our NVMe0N1 which is our drive with all of our partitions set up. And we're gonna go ahead and mount dev nvme0n1p3, which is our root. And we're gonna mount that as slash mnt. All right, now we need to mount our, or um, we actually need to make directory mnt slash boot on our new root folder and we're gonna have to do it again for home on our new root folder okay so we've made those on our new root folder uh, new partition now we're going to mount our new boot partition to the boot folder dev nvme 0 n one p one mnt slash boot and mount dev slash nvme0n1p4 mnt slash home. There we go, those are now mounted. So next thing we gotta do is uh, set up our mirror list, which is what Arch uses to find the packages that we're gonna download. So first we're gonna copy it, cp, and make a backup c slash pacman d slash mirror list if i can spell mirror right etc etc slash pacman d slash mirror list dot backup okay gonna do that and now what we're gonna do is we're going to remove all of the hashtags for the lines that say server in that file. And the reason we're gonna do that, you're probably thinking, what the hell is this guy doing right now? This is stupid what he's doing. The reason we're gonna do that is we're the way that we're going to set up our mirrors is we're going to use a command called rank mirrors. And I'm sorry, I'm like super congested right now. Um, and what rank mirrors does is it's going to test all of the mirrors that we've uncommented and pick out, in our case, the top six that ping on that list and then it's going to comment everything else out except for those top six so the way we do this is first we do the uncommenting which is scd space i s slash do this up sign there we go hashtag capital s server server Is that and then we do etc pack man d slash mirror list we're doing it to our backup so we don't mess up our main mirror list there now all of the hashtags that we need are removed now we're going to do our rank mirrors rank mirrors in six for the top six tc slash pack man d slash mirror list backup we're output that to our new mirror list which is etc slash pacman d slash mirror list okay double checking checking double checking double check and, and enter on that that's going to take a while maybe i don't know like 10 15 minutes and i'll edit this out and you know because it's like i said it's going to be running for a little while and then we'll come back shortly and continue on with the uh, 
the base installation. Okay, so our um, our rank mirrors has finished sorting our mirror list for us. And now the next thing we're going to have to do is install the base and base devel files for uh, Arch Linux. Do pack strap i slash mnt base base dash devel boom. It's going to do this. I'm going to do uh, default for all is fine default for all is fine proceed with installation yes and this is also going to take just a little while because it's basically installing everything you need for Arch Linux and I'll edit this out so you're not staring at my face for like 10 15 20 minutes while it installs okay well that took a little bit faster than uh, well it went a little bit faster than I expected it to but we're done now so let's go, not, not, not done with the whole guide, just done with that part. <laughs> Trust me, there's more. Okay, so now we have to begin configuring our newly installed Arch Linux uh, setup so that it's uh, usable and so that it'll boot. Let's go ahead and generate our fstab file. Gen fstab u, capital U, p, slash mnt, arrow arrow space slash mnt slash etc slash f stab all right now we got to check that so what we're going to do is nano slash mnt slash etc slash f stab what do we got here here is our root drive ext4 here's our boot drive here is our home drive, ext4, and here is our swap. Now, um, most SSDs these days support trim, have trim support. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit, go down here to this corner here and do defaults, comma, and I believe it's discard. Oop, that's discard. Discard. Okay, make sure that's there and then write it out, control O. Control X to exit. And now we're going to chroot into our actual system. Arch chroot slash MNT. There we go. Now we're working inside the system. Um, we're going to set up our uh, language locale. So nano etc slash locale dot gen. And you want to control W to find out where this is and type in EN underscore capital US dot capital UTF dash eight. It's going to find it. Hit control W again to find the next one because we want the one that's actually in the list, not in the guide at the beginning. And remove that hashtag right there. Okay. Now control O to write it out again. Control X to exit. Now we're going to actually generate that locale now that we've assigned which one we're going to use. Locale gen. If you're wondering what I'm looking over here, it's looking at over here, it's my notes. I've got notes for this install set up. Okay, now we've got them generated. Now we need to set them. Echo lang equals en underscore us dot utf dash eight. over to etc 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 slash locale.conf do that now we do export lang equals en underscore us dash your dot utf dash eight there we go even with the voice crack and all that's all set next thing we got to do is set up our time so ls slash user slash share slash zone info okay so here's all of our countries that we've got listed and for example like we're in America so CD, uh, uh, CD America or we'll do like 
see, I think it's like slash user slash share slash zone info slash America LS. Here's all your options for America. Um, I'm on the East Coast, so what I need to do is look through the list and find one that I want for East Coast is, I believe, New York, which is right there. Okay, I see it in the list. It's a little bit further down past the middle. So we found that our, our you know, the one that we want is in the list. So now what we're going to do is ln s slash user slash share slash zone info slash America slash New York. We're going to copy that over to slash etc slash local time. Oh, okay. All right, well, mine was already made, but if you don't, haven't made one yet, then you can go ahead and make yours. Uh, the other thing is we have to set the hardware clock, HW clock, sys, T-O-H-C, U-T-C. That sets our hardware clock. Now we're gonna do our host name. It's probably gonna tell me that this is already made too, so we'll do echo, uh, shitty walk. TC slash host name. And uh, I'm going to check that just in case. Okay, that's still there. Cool. That's good. That's done. Um, so we got our host name set up. Yes, I named my host Shitty Walk because I'm a South Park fan. <laughs> and now we need to enable the multi lib because we're going to want to run 32 bit programs on our 64-bit system. Uh, so, nano etc slash pacman.conf and we're gonna control W and type in multilib which is down here. Okay, remove those hashtags right there. Control O to write it out. And we're actually not going to leave yet. We're going to add the uh, Arch Linux FR repositories as well, which are the Arch Linux AUR Arch user repositories. Uh, we use those with a program called YART, Y-A-U-R-T. I pronounce it and slaughter it wrong every time. But yeah, let's go ahead and add those. Arch Linux FR in brackets. Sorry, my voice is cracking. It's getting kind of late here. Um, and then sig level equals never server equals http colon slash slash repo dot arch linux linux not linux dot fr dollar sign arch okay that's written out x now we do pacman SY or if you want to update also you do SYU that's what we're gonna do and it'll update all right now let's create our root password P -A -S -S -W -D, and type in the root password that I always use okay now we need to create the user that's always going to be logging in which is for me, uh, user add M G users, capital G, wheel, storage, power, S, bin, bash, glorious egg roll. Now let's set a password for that user, passwd, glorious egg roll. And we'll do the password that I use for that. Password updated successfully. All right, now we have to set up sudoers so that people can, you know, commit their sudo, sudo commands. So we'll do, we have to do it this way, otherwise it's not gonna save it. K 
caps lock editor underscore and you can turn caps lock off nano by sudo all right now we're going to control w again and do percent wheel so we can go and find this uncomment this where it says wheel all equals all all okay now underneath it we're going to add another line it says default root pw and what that's going to do is it's going to make it so that anybody that tries to do a sudo command has to know the root password instead of your password or instead of that user's password so that means they're not going to be able to do uh, anything sudo unless they know the basically the admin password okay so write that out control x now, if you want them to be able to do sudo without knowing the, the admin password, then you can remove the default root PW, but I don't recommend it. Maybe on a home system, but not on a server or something like that. Um, so yeah, we've got that written out. Now we're going to install bash completion so that we don't lose our minds. Pacman s bash completion. Yes. Okay, now we have to install the bootloader. Now, uh, this is a part that was uh, that has changed since the last update. Uh, before we were using Gummy Boot. Now, um, Gummy Boot has been incorporated as part of System CTL Boot, so we no longer have to install the Gummy Boot package. This is what we're going to do instead. Uh, again, check if our E5 variables are mounted. Mount T E5 var FS E5 var FS sys firmware EFI, EFI var FS, oh, the EFI vars. Okay, already mounted. Cool. So we don't have to mess with that. Now, boot CTL install is what we're going to do next. Okay, that's created. Next thing we're going to have to do is we need to get the part UUID of our root drive. This is the reason we're going to do this instead of typing slash dev slash SD whatever whatever device we used before is because this is a much more precise way of getting the partition and sometimes Linux likes to change the device number you know SD A123 etc. Uh, so that's not really a good way that's another reason fstab doesn't use that method as well I mean you can but it's not a very good method. So we're going to do blk id s part uuid o value dev nvme zero in one p i believe our root partition was three there it is okay so now we have to write that down somewhere let me go ahead and do that here Sorry guys, it's gonna take a minute. Okay, I had to double check that because that is long as hell. Make sure my uh, thing didn't get messed up by my num lock. All right, so we got that written down somewhere. And the next part is we have to set up the uh, configuration file for the bootloader. So nano slash boot slash loader slash entries slash arch.conf. Yes, this file is going to be blank. You have to make a new one. So, title Arch Linux Linux slash VM Linus dash Linux init rd slash init ram fs dash Linux dot img options root equals p-a-r-t u-u-i-d equals and then this long ass id that we just wrote down <laughs> eight b f three e seven f three four zero seven space rw for read write all right woohoo done Control O, light it out. Control X, get out of nano. Now, um, we're gonna go back to this in just a second. 
what we, I have to do because I have a I'm currently running a 4770K is uh, if you're running I, I think even 3770Ks use it but Intel processors use Intel U code and in order for you to not have freezes and other issues you're going to have to install Intel U code and add it to this so what we're going to do is we're going to do that pacman s intel u code proceed yes there it is now we're going to go back and we're going to edit that again okay and right above that init rid we're going to do another init rd slash intel whoop, that's not it intel dash u code dot img there control o write that out exit out of that okay so normally normally in my in my last video this is where you would be able to end it and then restart and boot into your system however there's an additional step that we have to do now and i'll show you why in particular because i have a 980 ti and uh new view doesn't Play kindly with our 980 Ti. So I'm going to reboot and show you what it does. So we do exit, reboot, pull this out for a minute. Now normally it would boot properly, however it may freeze. This is going to freeze. Wait for it to boot up here. Okay, it'll go past our U events, and boom, there's the freeze. Okay, so you, now you may be wondering, why the freeze? I installed everything, I did everything right. It, what, what's going on? Let me show you. We're gonna put the USB stick back in. Okay, we're gonna restart. Boot up from the USB stick again. Spam our F11 button. All right, Patriot. Hit E. No mode set. Space. Boot in here again. Do 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 do. It's gonna do this again. We're booting back through the USB. I'm gonna scroll all the way down so that we can have people watch it. And now we're gonna have to remount our drives. So LSBLK so we can see our drive names. And mount dev slash uh, NVMe 0N1P3 MNT for our root. Mount dev NVMe 0N1P1 slash MNT slash boot. Mount dev NVMe 0 in 1p4 slash mnt slash home arch ch root slash mnt get back on the system. So, how do we figure out what went wrong? Journal CTL. Okay, now uh, it's going to come up with all this gobbledygook. What we're going to do is we're going to hold page down so we can get all the way to the bottom. There we go. Now we can scroll up, see if anything came up out of the ordinary. Anyway, um, for whatever reason, maybe it didn't get a chance to load it. I don't know. But uh, our our error was with the new view drivers. So we're gonna hit Control C out of that, and we're gonna install our NVIDIA drivers before uh, rebooting again. And you'll you'll see the error. It'll come up in like bright red text. So trust me, it's not that hard to miss. So let me scroll down here, get my code here. Pseudo Pacman S Nvidia Nvidia libgl. And then our 32 bits because we want 32 bit programs to be able to run. Lib32.nvidia 
libgl lib32 nvidia utils and I believe maybe nvidia utils as well I'm not clear on this but we'll see um, one for the default yes Get all this installed. All right, now let's try it. Exit and reboot. Let me remove this. Bum 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 bum. Look at that! Holy crap! It didn't freeze! Oh my god! Ah! Oh! Holy shit! Okay, yeah. There you go. So, um, like I said, I didn't see it in the log, but it maybe skipped it, or maybe I skipped it. I just paged down too fast, but it'll be there. You'll see it in bright red letters. It'll see N O U V E A U, blah 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 blah. That's the issue. So now we can officially log in. Gloria Sigrol, my password, and boom, that's done. We are officially done with part two of our install guide. Um, and like I said, the reason I had to do that is because I had a 980 Ti. It's not compatible with uh, new view drivers yet. Uh, you may have better luck with some of the older cards. I know they've been having some issues with the 900 series cards. So there you go. That's the end of part two. We're going to record part three in just a moment and uh, see if we can make it a little bit more user friendly and add a desktop environment. But yeah, now we, as of right now, have a working running Arch Linux install that boots on its own. So, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Go ahead and check the links if you need to. I'll have them in the description, as always. And, yeah, if you've got any comments or questions, just go ahead and leave them.